Ladies and gentlemen, coach normal, teacher normal, player normal, everything normal at this point is here again. And today I'm going to talk about derivatives in calculus. Now, rem remember last time we talked about limits in uh, Counter-Strike terms. Now this time we're going to do derivatives in Counter-Strike terms. So let's go. So today we're in Mirage again, and we're going to cover the counter-terrorist path. Now remember, the counter-terrorist follows this path to go to A main. And this path actually very, very similarly resembles a um, cubic function, right? So what if on this path, you want to know the, exactly what you're looking at, assuming that you're following the exact equation, right, of the uh, function, right, from last time. We're going to use the same equation, but in that case, you need to find the derivative of this function. And basically, the derivative function of the function is another function or another equation where you find the slope where you can get the slope of the original function on any point if you plug in an x value. So let's hop into the overview. So right here, remember, same thing from last time. Oops. We are going to use exact... Ooh, what's up? We'll be using the exact... Um, ooh, man, this is a shaky line. We'll be using the exact point of A as the origin. And this is our graph. Oh, okay. Just pretend that everything is perfect. Now, if you remember what I did last time, the CT started right here, as they as they went here, as they went here, and then right back there. Right. That's where. That's how they got to A main. So, what if? Well, actually, let's write out the equation first. So CT of x. Remember, last time is equal to negative x times x plus 2 times x x minus 2 now we should multiply this out this time because it, it'll become uh it'll become useful in the future so if you multiply it out uh ct of x which is x plus 2 times x minus 2 times negative x it'll be equal to negative x squared plus 4x now some things to remember right so if you want to find the derivative of a function usually you follow this limit as delta x is approaching zero, delta x is just another term. Um, uh, uh, f of x plus delta x, you plug in your equation to this, minus f of x over delta x. Now you plug this equation into here. But honestly, that's a load of work, right? Who, who wants to do that? So I'm going to introduce some laws in a bit. So also, just remembering... This is actually a very simple form of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, I believe. I think my teacher told me about that. I don't really remember too much. But basically, we can't use this for a function like this. Because in order to use y2 minus y1 over x2 over x1, you need a, you need a, a linear function. And what we have is not a linear function. What we have is a cubic function from this uh, cube right here. So... Yes, so I'm going to get into some of my notes right here. So I'm still learning, so I might get some stuff wrong. Maybe correct me if I do, but here are some derivative laws of a function. So this is, I think, called the constant rule, I guess. So we won't use this first one right here, but d of x, which is der the derivative of c, which is a constant, is equal to 0. So if it's any number, the derivative of 3 would just be 0. d of x... That's the, uh, now for the second one, c of f of x is equal to c times the derivative of, um, 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 x, I believe. Yes, that's right. And then, basically, if you have, like, a 2x, the derivative would just be a 2, because the derivative of x dx, x equals to uno. But what if that x has an exponent, right? So here is another um, another exponent, or another derivative law, I guess. So x to the power of n, n is another constant, meaning it's a number, it's a set number. Now, basically what you would get is n times x to the power of n minus 1. So basically if you had 2, 
or sorry, x to the power of 3, what you would have is 3x to the power of 2, because the n up here is 3, and you're multiplying it by 3, and then you multiply, subtract it by 2, which gets you 2 right here. Let's study all that real quick. So, how does that apply to our equation right here? Let's try blue, or dark blue, purple -ish. I like it. So, for ct prime of x, you put that one on top to find basically the derivative function of this. I think that's the notation. Again, I'm still learning. So basically, for these individual terms, also, if they're multiplied or divided, you're going to have to use another law, which is the product rule and the quotient rule. So I'm not going into that. That's too much work. So ct1 of x equals to negative x to the power of 3. So because of this law right here, c of x and this one, you're able to take this 3 out to multiply it, so negative 3x, and then you subtract the 3 by 1, so you get 2, plus 4x. Now, what is the derivative of 4x? Oh, I didn't write that down. Well, another one here is actually... Okay, okay, okay. It's okay. d over d of x over dx equals... Oh, okay, oh my goodness. The derivative of kx equals to k. Now, why is that? Because x is technically to the power of 1. Now, if you multiply that by 1x to the power of 0, that's equals to 1. Because anything to the power of 0 is 1. Now, with that being said, the x is basically eliminated. And all you're left with is a 4, the constant, which is kx equals to k. Oh, that's a little weird. Now, right here, this is actually your derivative function. Now, you want to find what the slope is on any point, right? But, or you can find a slope now on any point. What if you want to see what you're looking at on this point right here? So basically, on this point right here, where am I looking at? Am I looking there? Probably not, but you know, maybe it's possible, right? Or am I looking there? Maybe it's also possible. Part two. <laughs> so right here, what is that line? So, hello, control Z. So. We know that this point is actually 0, comma, 0. That's the origin because it passes through 0, 0. So that means we can just plug in the x value as negative 3 to the power, or times 0 to the power of 2 plus 4. Now, 0 to the power of 2 is 0 times negative 3, still 0, plus 4. So we get 4 as a slope. So y equals 4x plus b. This is the equation of the line right here. We want to find that. That's what we want to find. So thing is, what is b? Wait, the y is up to 0. So doesn't that mean a z? Or I mean, it's 0? So, boom, ain't nothing right here. So the equation of the line that you're looking at is y equals to 4x, which is around this. Now, basically, if you're walking right here, what you're looking at, your equation is 4x. So this is what you're looking at. So the distance from here to there creates a line of 4x, which is kind of sick, I guess. If it's more to there, it would be lower because the slope probably uh, decreases. But yeah, that's pretty sick. If we put this in Desmos, you'll see as well, this is the equation of the line on the point 0, 0. And that's what derivatives are. You want to find the equation of... You want to find the line of a slope. You want to find the line of a function on an individual point. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope this video was understandable enough as the last one. So yeah, I'll see you all next time.